Hi, my name is Dr. Tim Limebury. I'm an assistant professor um, in psychiatry at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Um, my collaborators, uh, Dr. Anna McDowell at University of Washington in Seattle, and Dr. Michael Bostwick uh, here at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota as well, have published a recent article which is available as online first in Mayo Clinic Proceedings Online and in the print edition in the August 2011 uh, Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our article is entitled Practical Suicide Risk Management for the Busy Primary Care Physician. In our article, we focus on both the prevalence of suicide risk and suicidal behaviors in primary care practices, as well as provide some basics related to management and assessment of suicide risk in your primary care practice. In our article, we focus on first the prevalence of suicidal behavior within both the general population and within a primary care practice. Almost 4% of adults in the United States in the past year have had serious thoughts of suicide. And almost 45% of those who die by suicide have seen their primary care physician within the past month. That's opposed to 20% who have actually seen their mental health clinician. Also, primary care physicians write approximately 60% of antidepressant prescriptions in the United States. So based on this, there's obvious importance in terms of being able to assess suicide risk in your practice. What we go over within our articles, we touch on both the populations at risk, which is primarily those with psychiatric illness, as well as methods of identifying and screening for those at risk. As well, we talk about some differences in terms of assessment and management, um, some of those are based on your individual practice, such as asking about suicide, asking about anxiety and agitation, and working within suicide risk assessment and management. We also, though, talk about collaborative care models for depression, which seem to have um, significant potential in improving our care and assessment of patients at risk for suicide. Key findings within our review are that, though we are all familiar with you know, our teaching that asking about suicide doesn't lead people to attempt suicide or to suicidal behavior. Clinical research shows that in primary care practices, however, we frequently don't ask about suicide. In fact, do it less than half the time, and that's even in patients who are depressed and being prescribed antidepressants. We talk about that, and we also try to clarify some of the findings and more recent research that makes sense of the black box warning for your practice. Finally, we discuss issues related to suicide risk assessment and management that you can take whether you're involved in a collaborative care type of practice for depression or within your regular practice. Our hope is that by identifying ways in improving assessment and care in primary care practices that we can make a difference in preventing suicide and preventing suicide-related behaviors, overdoses or other morbidity associated with suicide. suicide Behavior is common, it's something that you see in your primary care practice, and there are ways that we can intervene to make a difference. As well, this is a concise review for clinicians, and so after reading the article, um, either online or in the print edition, uh, you are eligible, after taking the questions, for one hour of AMA Category 1 credit. On behalf of my collaborators, Dr. Anna McDowell at the University of Washington in Seattle, and Dr. Michael Bostwick here at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Thank you for your time and patience in advance. Thank you. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.